Hey everybody, this is my solo playthrough of the Atlas Games Dungeoneer. Dungeoneer Realm of the Ice Witch, specifically, because that's the set that I have. Although I also have Dungeoneer Call of the Lich Lord, but that is an epic edition, meaning that it is a higher level. So to start at level 1, I'm going to start with Realm of the Ice Witch. That's not all of the Dungeoneer games that exist. There are other packs that you can play. And the cool thing about them is that they're all inter... that you can mix them together. You can play Realm of the Ice Witch cards in the Dungeon... Uh, in the, um, the Lich Lord cards. So you can mix the, the games together if you want to. I'm not going to do that in this, in this playthrough. I kind of want to keep things simple. And uh, this is Realm of the Ice Witch. Now, before I get started, I'm going to separate the deck into a couple of different stacks. And actually, I'll just set the stacks uh, up at the top of my, my play area. And the different stacks that I'm doing are, these are the map cards. So these are the cards that I'm going to be laying out in order to form the, the game board, really. So that's the map deck. Uh, the next deck I'm going to separate cards into is are, are the glory cards glory or you could also call them boon cards i think that the dungeoneer rules actually uses both terms for these it, it uses a lot of different terms for the same elements unfortunately in the official rules but like i say i'm playing a solo variant so this is a glory card and you can tell that it's a glory card because it's got the little green thumbs up icon in the upper left corner so these all have the green thumbs up. And the back of the deck uh, is labeled Encounter. So those are the glory cards, and I'm going to put those at the top of the play area. Same card back, but uh, different card faces, as you can probably tell up in the upper left-hand corner here. These cards have red skulls on them. This is the Peril deck. You might also call them Banes. I'm going to try to keep my terminology consistent. I'm putting that up at the top of the game play area, upside down. So from my perspective, this is right side up, that's upside down. That's how I tell those two decks apart. Because in the, in the multiplayer version, of course, these are all mixed together. Okay, that's really all the decks that I need, but there are, in some, in some um, boxes, there are special cards, uh, like special rule cards, such as in the Realm of the Ice Witch, there is this card, the Winter Spell. So this is something that I have to sort of account for every turn. So I'm going to put that up there, even though I don't need to like draw it or anything. As I progress through these decks through the course of the turn, I'll be able to remember to do some, some maintenance thanks to that card there. Now I also need a... Um, th there's this other deck. There's this fourth or third deck or whatever. Uh, different card backs. Again, this has got the torch on it, skull, map. These are the quest cards. So I'm going to um, draw two of them from the top. Two, because I, I, I want a sort of a standard difficulty game. I consider one very easy, two can get a little bit tricky, and three and four gets pretty tough. So these are the missions. These are the win conditions for this particular playthrough. And that'll change, you know, the, depending on what quest card you have. So my first one is Rescue Emmy, and it says that I have to find Emmy by rolling a seven or more or better on one die that doesn't that's not possible because the die that we're using are d6s but you add a plus one to each roll for each space you are from the nearest entrance so there is a chance to find emmy and then you have to get emmy back to an entrance to deliver her to safety the other one is to defeat the frigid demon that sounds fun. Uh, it's going to be a combat scenario, I imagine, to complete this quest, defeat the frigid demon while on Glacier Can Canyon. Last but not least, I have to take from this, this final deck of cards, 
I have to take a, um, they're all out of, out of alignment. I have to take, I have to choose a character. And you can choose a character randomly. You could choose a character based on stats, on your play style, whatever. Each character has a couple of different attributes. They have melee, they have magic, and then they have movement. And as you can imagine, all the different builds, character builds, have sort of a different arrangement of skills. And even when they have the same arrangement of skills, they progress at a different rate. So the more that you level up, maybe the more in one attribute you'll gain faster, and so on. Uh, I think I will play Onoku Kai. Onoku Kai uh, is, I guess you could call her a magic caster, probably. One, three, four, five. That seems pretty magic y to me. She doesn't really do much melee, so that's going to be interesting to experience. I, I, I guess I've probably played someone without melee before, because I've definitely played Nadalia before. Um, but I've also played like the uh, one of these barbarian types as well. So yeah, we'll see. Channel Arctic Wind. Pay any number of glory points, and uh, the result will be that the target monster in your space has uh, a number a minus the number of your uh, magic this turn. Limit once per turn. So that could be pretty crippling, actually, to deduct uh, sort of action points from my foe. This red droplet is blood, so she has six life to start with. I think that's, I think everyone has six life to start with. Yeah, six life to start with, uh, and I think that's all we really care about right now. That's my character card, and I'll put that somewhere where I can see it. And I'll add, just so that I can track a little bit better, uh, one little counter die to keep track of life. Now, in the in the card game set, it comes with little paper tokens so that you can sort of cut the tokens out, fold them over, and um, move them around the board. I am not going to cut up those cards, and instead I'll just use a little miniature that approximates a no Gukai. Okay, we're almost set up now, but there is one further task, and that is to look through the map cards and locate one that's labeled entrance. The confusing thing about this is that the the biggest text on the card is sort of the location name, and entrance is not a location name, it's a trait. So you have to kind of look up in the upper left corner of the location card to establish whether it's an entrance or not. There can be more than one entrance per game. There's only one entrance per box, I, I think, but uh, you can, if you mix boxes, then you can have several entrances, and that's okay. But in this case, I, I've got one entrance, and then I'm going to draw one, two, three, four more cards, map cards, and place them around the entrance in such a way that these little white boxes on the edges of each card are contiguous with another white box. So notice that this bend has black boxes up in the upper, uh, the top and the, the east. Well, that means I couldn't put the, I couldn't put a black to a white. It has to be white to white so that you can get, it's essentially a door, so you can get from one place to the next. Now, if the box has a, a number in it, that's telling me that there's a trap or a lock there that I need to overcome in order to get to, to pass through that, that portal. Okay, so that's my starting map, and I can already tell I'm going to have serious space issues um, starting out. Uh, just because of the size of the of the camera and everything, but that's fine. I think I can I can improvise as needed. I can move cards around. So th that's the setup stage. Everything's set up to go now. So I'll place my my mini there in the entrance, and in the next in the next session I will uh, take my first turn. Oh wait, actually, you know what? I can I can do one thing, and that is to draw three cards from the glory deck. This is my starting hand. 
you have three cards to start with, and by default, all of your starting cards go uh, the way I organize it is it goes to the right of your character card. There are two different types of cards. I don't know if I got two different types, but there are two different types. Yeah. So here's th this is an instant spell. It's a destroy demon spell, which wow, that'll be really good actually for uh for a, a very specific quest. And then there are also permanent cards. And permanent doesn't really mean that it takes effect forever. It just means that you can permanent you can remember this spell. You can learn this spell. It's kind of like a spell scroll as opposed to just remembering something. So during my turn, I'll be able to transfer permanent spells over to the left of the character card, and this is my active hand. So that's that's how I organize my play area. Okay, next session, we'll start playing. Thanks for watching.